Okay, in this video I'm going to talk about using what's called the discriminant to find the number of solutions to a quadratic equation. And the discriminant is the value b squared minus 4ac. Um, and if you know the quadratic formula, this might look familiar. So the quadratic formula says um, if you have a quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c equal to 0, you can find solutions to that quadratic equation using uh, this formula, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. The stuff underneath the square root, the b squared minus 4ac stuff, that's what's called the discriminant. Okay, and basically just by looking at that stuff, b squared minus 4ac, you can determine whether your quadratic equation has one solution, two solutions, um, I should say one one distinct solution, two uh, one solution, two distinct solutions, or uh, no solutions, uh, no real solutions. Um, you can always bring in complex numbers, but we're not going to do that. Okay. And it says basically if the if the stuff b squared minus 4ac equals zero, you're going to get exactly one solution. And think about it. If if it equals zero, what's going to happen? Well, the stuff underneath the square root's going to be 0, so basically the square root's just going to disappear because the square root of 0 is 0, and we'll just be left with negative b over 2a, um, and that'll be your solution. It says if the stuff underneath the square root's positive, you're going to get two solutions. And again, you know, suppose the stuff underneath the square root works out to be, say, 9. Then we'll be adding 3 and also subtracting 3 to get two different answers. It says that the stuff underneath the square root is less than zero. Well, that means it's negative, and we don't take square roots of negative numbers um, again unless we use complex numbers, and we're not going to do that. Okay, so let's see what happens here. So all I'm just going to do two quick examples. Um, you know, sometimes they'll say determine the nature of the solutions. So uh, I'm just going to you know determine. Uh, the number of solutions. I mean, obviously, I think it wouldn't be a tremendous amount of extra effort to actually, uh, you know, use the rest of the quadratic f uh, formula to actually find the solutions. But here, we'll just determine the number of solutions. So suppose I have the quadratic equation 3x squared minus 2x plus 4 equals 0. Well, again, whatever number's in front of x squared, that's your a term. Whatever number's in front of the x term, that'll be your b. And then whatever the, the number hanging out is, that'll be your c value. So when I go to look at the b squared minus 4ac, it says I'll get b squared minus 4 times a times c, which is 4. So in this case, we're going to be left with um, negative 2 squared, which is 4 minus, well, 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 4 is 48. And it says we're going to get a negative number out, so negative 44. And again, based on what we just saw a second ago, it says if that discriminant is a negative number, it means that you have no solutions no solutions at all, okay? And, you know, maybe it's worth pointing out as well, um, if this thing has no solutions, again, what it means in terms of the graph is it never crosses the x-axis. Um, so if you were going to actually sketch y equals 3x squared minus 2x plus 4, we could actually find the, uh, the vertex using the negative b over 2a. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to be a little sloppy here. But again, since the coefficient on the x squared is a positive, I know that it opens upwards. And since it can't, since there's no solutions, I know it has to open upwards and be above the x-axis, for example. Okay, so just, just a little, you know, a little side note there. Um, I always tell my students, I think it's good when you think about, you know, solving equations or, or inequalities, you know, what, what's, how could you get that answer from the graph as well? What's going on in terms of the graph? Okay, so let me, uh, let me maybe do at least one other one here. Suppose that I have um, the quadratic equation 9x squared minus 12x 
plus 4 equals 0. Okay, looks like I picked on plus 4 twice here. Well, again, my a is going to be positive 9, my b is going to be negative 12, my c is going to be positive 4. Looks like the signs worked out to be the same too, so, um, oh well. Okay, so it says when we use our formula, again, when we use the b squared minus 4ac, again, I just have to plug these numbers in, so I'll get negative 12 squared minus 4 times a, which is 9, times c, which is 4. Well, negative 12 times negative 12 is positive 144. 4 times 9 is 36. 36 times 4 is actually 144 as well. And this works out to equal 0. And again, we said if the discriminant works out to be 0, that means there is exactly one solution. or sometimes they will call solutions roots and in this case you would say that this is actually a repeated root. Um, so alright just a couple examples here of using the discriminant um, you know I, I don't use it very often ever um, even in algebra classes, pre-calculus classes or um, calculus classes I mean if I need to find the solutions um, you know, I just plug it into the quadratic formula if that's what I have to do. But, of course, if you don't, you know, you need to understand what's happening when you get different values underneath that square root. And that's what the, you know, people are trying to point out when they really make you talk about the discriminant. It's not that we're, we're going to use the discriminant um, on its own, but people just want you to be aware. Again, hey, if you get a positive number underneath here, you get two solutions. If you get zero underneath the, the square root, you have exactly one solution. And if you get a negative number underneath there, you get no solutions. Again, using real numbers. So, all right, I hope this uh, makes some sense and clears up uh, why the discriminant is worth talking about. Um, and if you have any questions, just send me an email.